Rules Don't Apply is a 2016 romantic comedy drama film directed and written by Warren Beatty. The movie is set in 1958 Los Angeles, and the plot follows the story of an aspiring actress and a young driver hired by Howard Hughes. The movie starts with a montage of Hollywood, showing Howard Hughes in a room talking about planes, before it goes back to show Marla Mabry arriving at the Los Angeles International Airport with her mother, Lucy, and looking around with anticipation. As a devout Baptist beauty queen, Marla is nervous but excited about the opportunity, to become a Hollywood actress. She carries a small suitcase and wears a simple yet elegant dress, and a pair of high heels. As she waits for her ride, she looks at scenery and the sunny sky, feeling a sense of awe and wonder. Soon enough, a man who has been waiting next to a black sedan, approaches them and introduces himself as Frank Forbes, an employee of Howard Hughes. Frank is wearing a suit and tie and looks professional yet friendly. He greets Lucy and whether intentionally or he made an honest mistake, refers to her as Miss Marla, before eventually Lucy informs him that she in fact is not Miss Marla but rather her mother. Soon enough Marla herself meets Frank and from first meet, they are both smitten by each other but they maintain a professional friendliness. Frank helps them with their suitcase and they are soon on their way to their residence. During the ride, Frank, Lucy and Marla make small talk. Frank asks Marla about her background, her family, and her hopes for the future. Marla tells him that she grew up in Virginia, where she won several beauty pageants and became a devout Baptist. She explains that she feels called to become an actress, but also wants to remain true to her values and beliefs. Lucy in turns asks Frank some questions, some about himself like what church he attended, which he informs her of. She also asks him about Mr. Howard Hughes, and he explains that he is not only new on the job but he has also never met Mr. Howard Hughes before. This shocks both Marla and Lucy, and Frank goes further to tell her that it was because Mr. Howard was an eccentric man, and that was just how he operated. He hoped to meet him soon, as he had other dreams and wanted to share his ideas to Mr. Howard, and didn't intend to remain a driver for long. Lucy and Marla continue the conversation and Frank listens attentively and nods, showing empathy and understanding. He tells Marla that Hughes, although quite unique, is a visionary who can make her dreams come true. He also warns her that the road to success in Hollywood can be rocky and challenging, but that he and Hughes will do their best to support her. After Frank picks up Marla from the airport, he drives her to the Hollywood Hills and shows her the luxurious neighborhood. He informs her that she will be staying there with her mother, Lucy. Marla is amazed by the beautiful view and can't believe she gets to stay in such a beautiful place. Frank explains that Howard Hughes is providing the home for her as part of her contract with RKO Pictures. As they approach Marla's new home, a beautiful house in the Hollywood Hills, Marla gasps in amazement. The house is a Spanish-style mansion with a red tile roof and a sweeping view of the city. Frank helps them with their suitcases and shows her around the house, which is tastefully furnished and decorated. Marla thanks Frank and tells him that she is excited to start her new life in Hollywood. Frank smiles and wishes her luck, telling her that he will be in touch soon. As Marla watches Frank drive away, she feels a mix of excitement, apprehension, and gratitude. She then takes a deep breath and enters the house, ready to begin her Hollywood journey. As Marla begins to settle into her new life in Hollywood, she relies on Frank to drive her around the city and help her navigate the world of show business. As the days go by, it begins to dawn on Marla and her mother that she might never actually get to meet Mr. Howard Hughes, as it seems like no one has met the man, including the other girls, except very few people. People. And Lucy, Marla's mother, disapproved of this. She also disapproved of how their paycheck was handed to them, since they had to sign it on a string lowered from a window as they waited in line. She voiced her complaint to Frank on a drive one day, as she feels like Mr. Howard acts like he owned the girls. During that particular drive, Marla asks Frank why he always slowed down at every bump, swerve and turn. He gives her a handbook and tells her to read from a particular page. This page talked about how the driver had to slow down at every of these turns and bump so as not to shake any unsupported body parts. This amused Marla but appalled Lucy. While Marla laughed, it solidified Lucy's views that Mr. Howard Hughes indeed acted like he owned the girls. Despite the strict rules set by Hughes' company, Frank and Marla develop a close friendship. They are always at close proximity, as he was her designated driver and took her to every of her singing and dance classes. However, they are careful to avoid any behavior that could be seen as inappropriate or jeopardize Marla's contract with RKO Pictures. Frank is also conscious of his engagement to Sarah, which makes him hesitant to pursue any romantic feelings he may have for Marla. Nevertheless, their time together strengthens their bond, and they begin to confide in each other about their personal struggles and aspirations. Frank and Sarah have been engaged for a while, and they both come from deeply religious backgrounds. Sarah is a devout Christian who strongly believes in waiting until marriage to get intimate. Frank, on the other hand, is struggling to reconcile his desires with his religious beliefs. He loves Sarah but finds it difficult to resist his intimate desires. They have gotten intimate before, and to Sarah, if one had gone the whole way with someone, it means that you were meant to marry them, even if other things were not working in the relationship. 
So even though they had the crippling guilt of having gotten intimate before marriage, they continued with their engagement and hid that detail from everyone else. Marla spends the first few months in Los Angeles taking singing and dance classes, and Frank becomes her primary driver, accompanying her to various events. Despite strict company rules that prohibit the starlets from having close contact with men, Frank and Marla begin to develop a close friendship. Throughout this time, Marla continues to meet with Hughes, but their interactions are mostly through phone calls and letters. She becomes increasingly intrigued and curious about the reclusive billionaire, and wonders why he hasn't met her in person yet. Despite her frustrations with the Hollywood system, Marla remains hopeful that her screen test will happen soon and that she will get her chance to shine on the big screen. Eventually Lucy leaves Hollywood and goes back home leaving Marla alone at her apartment. Frank and Marla continue to spend time together, with Frank serving as Marla's confidante, and support her. Marla confides in Frank about her frustrations with the Hollywood system, feeling that she doesn't fit the mold of a typical Hollywood starlet. She worries about conforming to the Hollywood rules of being a great singer, dancer, or having a big bosom. Frank assures her the rules do not apply to her. Frank encourages Marla to be true to herself and pursue her dreams of becoming a serious actress, rather than conforming to Hollywood's strict standards. As they spend more time together, Frank and Marla's relationship grows closer. Frank allows her to drive after asking her if she has her driver license, despite it being against the rules, and makes sure they don't get seen. He also allows her to sit in the front seat while he drives which was also against the rules. They share personal stories and become increasingly comfortable around each other. Despite the rules imposed by Hughes' company that prohibit close contact between starlets and men, Frank and Marla continue to confide in each other and become good friends. Finally, Marla is told by Lever that Mr. Hughes wants to see her. Marla arrives at the private bungalow and is escorted to a room where she waits for Hughes. She looks around the room and sees various items, including a lit candle, an ashtray filled with cigarette butts, and a row of photographs of Hughes with various women. Hughes finally arrives and offers her a drink, but Marla declines. He asks her why, and she tells him that it is because she has never had alcohol in her life and does not intend to start. He finds it quite unbelievable and at the same time quite admirable. They engage in small talk, and Marla talks openly about her aspirations to be a serious actress. Hughes is impressed by her sincerity and intelligence and sets up her screen test, giving her a chance to prove herself. Marla leaves feeling relieved and grateful for the opportunity. Mr. Howard decides he wants to meet Frank and asks that Frank be invited to come and drive him. Frank is informed and he is very excited seeing it as his chance to finally share his ideas and business plan with him. He arrives to pick Howard up, and as he steps out to open the door for Mr. Howard, Mr. Howard passes him and sits at the driver's seat while Frank scrambles for the front seat and begins to talk to him. It almost seems like Mr. Howard is not exactly interested in talking to him. He drives him to a harbor and then they take a walk. While on the work, he asks Frank about the other drivers and how they conduct themselves with the girls, and Frank tells him that they usually are very professional with the girls. Then he asks him about Marla and how she is. He also confirms from Frank that she has never truly drank before and is not a fast girl meaning that she was not promiscuous. Then Frank tells him that she goes to a church not very far from his. Mr. Howard is fascinated by that and is shocked that Frank goes to church. Frank then tells him that he goes to church every Sunday. Eventually they settle in front of Howard's plane, eating in front of the plane where a table with hamburgers and fries for two was set. This is after Mr. Howard finally agrees to listen to what Frank has been trying to sell to him, through the time they have spent together. Eventually he tells him he likes to come to say hello to his plane and makes Frank say hello to the plane. Frank confesses he has never been in a plane before and is terrified of it, and Mr. Howard decides he will invite him for a flight on his plane one day. Franks impresses Hughes with his ambition and drive. Hughes is impressed by Frank's work ethic and intelligence, and he decides to bring Frank into his inner circle of staff. As Frank begins to work closely with Hughes, he becomes aware of the eccentric billionaire's increasing reclusiveness and paranoia. Hughes is consumed by a fear that minority shareholders at his airline company, Trans World Airlines, will have him declared incompetent and committed to a mental institution. And also, for some reason he thinks everyone is trying to be his father. He obsessively studies the news, looking for any indication of a plot against him, and becomes more and more isolated from the world outside his office. Despite Hughes' growing instability, Frank remains loyal to the billionaire, and continues to work hard to protect his interests. After Marla's months of waiting, Hughes finally sets up her screen test. However, the experience is not what Marla expected, as the studio executives focus more on her appearance than her acting ability. They give her a few tests which she feels she doesn't do well on. They request that she should wear a bathing suit, and she disagrees, saying that it doesn't align with her beliefs and she's not forced to do it. When she gets home, she is visited by Frank, who comes to the house under guise of fixing a new TV antenna, even though the old one is not bad. 
He tells her he saw her screen and tells her that it was amazing. He thought that they would eventually see her for how good she is. Even though she complains that she can't sing well enough, regardless, disillusioned with the superficiality of the Hollywood system, Marla performs a song she wrote for Frank during the test. Afterward, they share a passionate kiss, before it overwhelms them, and they begin to make out so hard, that they break the glass table and the glass vase, and while they are doing that, they hear a car pull up in the driveway. They recognize it to be Levar, and Frank gets up and finds out that he had soiled his trousers. He runs to hide in the bathroom while Marla talks with Levar as she invites him in. She tells Lever that they had broken the table while trying to fit the new antenna, and that Frank was inside trying to get a broom. Still, Marla feels guilty for cheating on her fiancé. Marla is feeling really bad and guilty about what had happened between her and Frank. She labels herself a homewrecker who had almost slept with a married man, in her opinion. Marla is later called to another late-night meeting with Hughes, where she consumes alcohol for the first time and becomes very drunk. It had turned out that she was not the one Hughes had asked to see and rather someone else with two M's in her name. Lever decides he is going to dismiss her but Hughes finally agrees against it and decides to meet her. While they are having the conversation, Hughes is supposed to meet with a group of investors and refuses to meet him physically. He thought they would see him as crazy and use it as an excuse to take his company from him. They keep calling and he keeps telling them they didn't need to see him physically, even though they were basically already some few feet away at most. The group gets increasingly frustrated, and eventually, the caller breaks the phone and he never meets them. After this, Hughes becomes more flirtatious with her, and she tells him how special he is to her. And because of the alcohol, she is very free with him and speaks her mind. She tells him that she doesn't think he is crazy but rather thinks he is a genius, and that she also believes that all the girls had a crush on him. Marla performs her song for him and kisses him after putting a dessert on his lips, and this leads to them getting intimate. After this encounter, when Marla is leaving, Hughes gives her a stone-encrusted ring as a promise. The next day, Marla reveals to Frank that she is secretly engaged and dismisses him, feeling guilty about cheating on her fiancé. But it didn't take long for Mr. Hughes to disappear suddenly. It is revealed that he had gone to Vegas and had gotten married to Jean Peters, a longtime friend. He had mostly done this because he had been told that it was the only way to save himself from being committed to an asylum. They would need consent from his spouse, and Jean, in his opinion, would never let that happen to him. This way, he would be able to keep his company saved. This news was released at a press conference and it devastated Marla. After Hugh's marriage to Jean Peters, he becomes increasingly reclusive and paranoid. He even goes so far as to fire his trusted employee Noah Dietrich, who had been with him for over 30 years. In his place, Hughes hires Robert Mahew as CEO of his companies, but Mahew warns him that minority shareholders at his airline company, Trans World Airlines, could force him to appear in court on charges of mismanagement. Despite this warning, Hughes becomes increasingly erratic and delusional, convinced that everyone around him is conspiring against him. He spends much of his time locked away in his private screening room, watching old films and listening to his collection of recordings. His health begins to deteriorate, and he becomes increasingly dependent on a cocktail of drugs to help him sleep and manage his anxiety. Meanwhile, Frank is struggling with his feelings for Marla and the guilt of cheating on Sarah. He tries to break things off with Marla, but she refuses to let him go. Eventually, Sarah finds out about Frank's infidelity, and breaks off their engagement. Frank is left feeling lost and alone, unsure of what his future holds. Marla finds out she is pregnant with Hugh's child and travels to confront him. However, when she does, Hughes accuses her of lying and trying to extort him for money. Marla is devastated by his reaction and leaves in tears. She returns to Virginia to stay with her family, but struggles with the emotional turmoil of the situation. Meanwhile, Hughes becomes increasingly reclusive and paranoid, and begins to withdraw from public life. He leaves the country with his entourage, traveling to different locations and becoming increasingly erratic in his behavior. As Frank, Levar, and Nadine anxiously wait for Hughes to make a call to the American press regarding the book, Marla arrives with her five-year-old son, Matt. She reveals to Frank that she and Hughes have a child together, and that Hughes is aware of his existence. However, Marla is not sure whether she wants Hughes to have a relationship with Matt or not. Just as they are discussing this, Marla receives a call from Hughes, who is in the Bahamas. He informs her that he is not well and that he wants her to come and see him. Marla and Frank travel to the Bahamas, where they find Hughes in a reclusive state, surrounded by his entourage. Meanwhile, Levar and Nadine successfully find Mamie, Miskin's ex-girlfriend, who agrees to testify in court that Miskin never met Hughes in person. With this evidence, Hugh's empire is safe from the damaging claims in the book. In the Bahamas, Hughes opens up to Marla about his fears and insecurities, and the two reconcile. Hughes, sitting in his darkened room, is surrounded by his aides, including Noah, as he makes the phone call. The room is silent except for the sound of Hugh's voice on the phone. 
Hughes talks in great detail about current and past events, proving that he is lucid and aware of what is going on. He confirms that he has never met Richard Miskin, and that Miskin's claims about his mental state are completely false. As he speaks, the tension in the room slowly dissipates, and his aides begin to relax. They realize that their worst fears of Hughes losing control of his empire due to false allegations have been averted. Hughes' aides are visibly relieved and congratulate each other on a job well done. The phone call ends, and Hughes hangs up. He takes a deep breath and looks around the room at his aides. He appears to be exhausted and frail, but there is a sense of satisfaction and relief in his eyes. Hughes' aides approach him to congratulate him on the successful phone call, and he thanks them for their support and hard work. As soon as Frank hears the news from Nadine about Marla and Matt, he quits his job and rushes to find them. He locates them in a park, where Matt is playing in a jungle gym. Marla is hesitant to speak with Frank, but he apologizes for not being there for her when she needed him and confesses his love for her. He promises to be there for her and Matt, no matter what. Marla is conflicted, as she still feels guilty about her past actions with Hughes and worries about the impact on her and Frank's relationship. Frank tells her that he has already forgiven her and that he understands the difficult position she was in. As they talk, Matt approaches and Frank introduces himself as his father. Matt is excited to meet his dad and quickly warms up to him. Marla sees how happy Matt is and realizes that Frank truly loves both her and their son. She forgives him and the three of them embrace, feeling grateful to be together again. As the press conference concludes, Hughes aides watch as he retreats back into his penthouse suite. Hughes is surrounded by his close circle of aides, including Noah, as he takes a seat and begins to watch the coverage of the conference. He is pleased with how it went and thanks his staff for their loyalty, but then withdraws into his world of seclusion. His aides try to engage him in conversation and offer to bring him food, but Hughes simply retreats further into himself, lost in his own thoughts. The camera lingers on his face, which shows a mix of weariness and satisfaction, as if he is relieved that the ordeal is over but also drained from the effort it took to appear lucid and in control. Finally, the camera fades to black, leaving Hughes alone in his penthouse, surrounded by his wealth but isolated from the world. 